Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and I'm here with Bitwig 3.0 Beta. And I'm going to show you the grid and give you some tips and tricks on using it. If you have the beta, this will probably be helpful to you. Um, if you don't have it, then it might be interesting if you're interested in what the, uh, what the grid is all about. So let's get into it. So first off, I just wanted to give you some perspective of how the grid kind of fits into the bigger picture of, you know, your setup or in Bitwig and so forth. So the grid is the most powerful of all the, the devices in Bitwig. It's the most flexible. It's easily probably going to be the most uh, flexible and powerful synthesizer in your arsenal as soon as you get your hands on it. Um, but it can't do everything, unfortunately. That was kind of my hope and dream, but, you know, obviously that's a very difficult feat. They've, they've gotten pretty close, but there's even some things that you can do in other devices in Bitwig that you cannot do in the grid, at least right now. Like, you can't do really low, um, low latency feedback. Um, whereas you can, like, uh, you, in phase four here, you can self-modulate and I think that's single sample feedback and you can even feedback one uh, uh, oscillator into the other and around in the circle that currently is not something you can do in the grid uh, feedback is restricted to only as short as a, a single buffer size so and that's currently the way it goes they it might change later and if it does i'll let you know but so you can't do certain things uh, with it that require really low amounts uh, low um, um time to feedback um second thing is, is is it is at least currently a cpu destroyer it really can soak up a lot of cpu like this patch i'm going to do for notes Check out that CPU there. So at some points it's, um, let's see, it's four there, now eight and down to four. So yeah, and this has one oscillator, one noise gate, two filters couple of LFOs. So yeah, it's pretty intense. It sounds great. <laughs> the oversampling definitely pays off, but it will um, make your CPU cry. So keep that in mind when you're messing around with it. Hopefully some optimization will bring those numbers down. But um, I think when you're dealing with high quality output, you, you're going to soak up some CPU. So I wouldn't expect it to get super low there. <clears throat> Okay, so the next thing is something super important. If you've been messing with the grid, you might have come into a problem where you're playing along quite nicely. Well, let me give you one quick point real quick. The, when you first open up the grid and you're playing a sound, the oscillator is giving you a full code output, um, so it's really loud. So just drop a mixer right on the edge here like that and turn it down some and you'll probably have a lot easier time with things. So that's another good point. Now, if let's say you went in here and you are um, getting a delay and you drop in your delay, uh, let's do this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag another output to this mixer and this will be the direct and this will be the um the delayed signal and now i'm going to feed it back into itself and let's play that so we're getting nice feedback great right fun now um Let's go ahead and click on this one, and we're only having one voice, so let's do eight voices, let's say. What? Where's my delay tails? 
So have you been running into some problems where sounds are dropping out or it's not doing exactly what you expect? The problem is that um, in order to save processor, when you're doing polyphonic mode, the system shuts down if the envelope closes. I think the envelope is pretty much the only thing that determines this uh, because if I make the envelope super short, we get like not even the hint of any sort of trail. So um, what we do to fix that is click on the output here and then we wanna turn on effect voice lifetime. We can turn down the threshold and then turn up the timeout, maybe half a second. And now we're getting the echo. So what's happening here is that um, this threshold means that if sound isn't hitting the output here above this threshold, it's going to shut down, and it's going to shut down after like uh, half a half a minute, a half a second, right? So um, you can use it if I want to get a lot of reverb trail. Then I can set this kind of low and give it some time out and then I'll be good to go. So hopefully that'll save you a lot of frustration. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to recommend is that you don't use effects within the grid when you're doing polyphonic mode. Um, when you are in polyphonic mode and you have more than one voice here, what's actually happening is, is that there are going to be that many copies of every component um, for is going to be at least one copy of every component for every note you play so if I play one note it's just one set of all this stuff but if I play three notes it's three oscillators three envelopes three um, delays and three mixers and they can all be independently tuned for each note so the reason why you don't want to do things like delay or effects in that way or you know it, d depending like usually reverb and delay and things like that you you don't need that it's not going to actually add anything to the sound so you want to go ahead and use the FX section here and add your effects down there um, it's going to sound just as good or maybe even better in some cases it's not going to take up as much CPU and it's going to be a lot easier to manage in your signal flow and so forth so don't forget about these pockets down here um, where you can put effects uh, because they are your friend. All right, what else can we look at here? Um, phase. Phase is confusing, I think. It was confusing to me. One thing I tried to do was I wanted to do a release envelope, right? So let's uh, set up a oscillator here and let's say I wanted um I don't know whatever I'll just do this and give it a this with a little bit of a glomp on it okay and I wanted that one to trigger with the release and so I put in um another envelope I believe uh and we're going to do an AD because we we want to go on the release but we want to end eventually and then um, I'm going to just, uh, well, let's just ride through here since we were having that kind of fun. And uh, connect this up. And so I want this one to trigger on a release note. So I would go in here and put this gate in here. And then I want to invert the gate. So I'm like, okay, how do I make it the opposite? And I went to phase and I said, okay, let's put this reverse in here and see if that helps. And then I wired that up and tried it. Nothing. This the signal wasn't even going through, and I'm like, what's the what here, man? Shouldn't that reverse it and do the opposite? But the thing with phase is if you try to use a logic signal with a phase signal, it's almost never gonna work. And the reason is because this type of signal, a logic signal, goes between zero and one. And the phase signal has a continuous, uh, it uses all the numbers basically between zero and one. But zero and one are the same value for a phase signal. And the way to think about that is if you have a circle and you have the degrees of a circle, like uh, you know zero degrees and you're going all the way around to 180 and then to um, 360, 360 and zero are actually the same point on the circle. 
So both the on and the off position of the logic signal are actually the same thing for phase signals. So they don't really mix very well. In general, when you're using this stuff, you want to kind of keep the the phase stuff with the phase stuff and the logic stuff with the logic stuff. Logic and phase don't mix very well um, at all. Now, if I were to um, attenuate the signal a little bit and, and have it have its on position be less than one, then I would get some kind of result that would work better. But the easiest thing to do to make this work is simply to go into logic and use this not uh, device here and then it works when I release it. But since it's going into that, it's delaying the release. So let's make it go directly into one of these guys. Uh, just to... And then that delay is um, pretty loud, but... but anyway, you get the idea. So anyway, that's how you want to keep things together, um, keep your logic with your logic. Now this is purple because it used to be a phase thing there. Uh, I don't think that's a bug. I think it's just the way that's going to always work. But if I want it to be normal, I just do that and it should work. Yeah, cool. Another thing I wanted to give you as a tip is that um, let's go back to the default patch. So this default patch is okay, but it's probably better. You'll probably have more fun with a better default. So just go ahead and build your own. And here's some of my suggestions. Put the mixer right on the end there so you can add different oscillators and stuff easily. And you're, you're always pretty much going to want that there. And you'll probably want it to attenuate that down some, maybe down to negative 10 or something right from the get-go. So that's a good thing to store. <clears throat> If you want, you could put a filter in there, um, but you know, whatever, you don't have to. Another thing you wanna do is get some of the most used um, uh, modules and just put them here into your default. So um, I like to use this, this AM a lot, um, attenuation, um, you know, like I really, like to use this a lot to modify things and whatever else you think you you might just use this like bam 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 a lot you can just go ahead and throw it down there and um, keep those ready to go and um, yeah so you set it up like you want also I would put it into polyphonic mode because for me again everything I do pretty much polyphonic most of the time. And then uh, you want to go ahead and click on here and remember turn on this voice effect thing. Turn this down significantly and turn this up to a certain amount. And now you have a polyphonic patch with some of your favorite stuff ready to go. And then when you save it, you just wanna go in here and click on save as default preset. And then every time you open up the grid, you'll have your workplace ready to go. It's also a good idea to make some templates for different types of synthesis and different tasks. And you can just label them template and then you can get right into doing whatever sort of synthesis you want um, and just tweak and tailor it the way you like. <clears throat> Yeah, so I think that is all of the um, tips I had. Um, hopefully this was helpful and enjoyable. I know this may only be relevant to a certain number of people, but I really just love what they're doing here. It, it, it has its some um, frustrations for me, but as I've, I've started to learn what they're doing, some of those frustrations have melted away and, and I can see the power and the uh, genius behind what the Bidwick team has accomplished here. So if you... Um, 
if you have uh, Bitwig, yeah, you, you, I'm pretty sure almost no one who has Bitwig hasn't been already trying this. But if you've been trying it and having some troubles, hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you're interested in it, hopefully this has also been helpful to you. So in any case, um, thanks for watching this and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.